Hey guys, today we're going to have a little bit of story time, if you will. Um, and I guess if I had to say, without sounding too dramatic, what the kind of overall message for this story is, is uh, fighting for what you're worth. And th that could be a lot of things, but in this, in this context, it's going to be about what your, your market worth as a developer is or uh, what you should be paid. So um, back when things were really rough, I was doing some freelancing work, getting paid uh, $15, $20 uh, an hour um, with very few clients. I, I really needed a job. Um, and eventually I ended up getting a job. But before that, I went to an interview at a web design company. It was a small one and it was, it was not a nice one. <laughs> uh, it was... Um, Everything about it was strange. Uh, so I, the um, I don't know if you've ever seen Trailer Park Boys, but it kind of one of the characters reminded me of um, the over the top uh, guy who's, yeah, he reminded me of one of the characters on there, and he was the owner. And um, I'm sitting there with my resume, and uh, at that point, all I had on there was a few freelance clients, and a internship. Um, so I, I didn't have, you know, I had a three month internship and some freelancing and I didn't have, I didn't have much, right? Um, it wasn't completely empty, but it wasn't like a godly resume. Um, work was hard. So I, uh, I, I'm, I'm being interviewed by this gentleman who has a, a Bluetooth in his ear, right? <laughs> I just want to paint the picture. He's got the Bluetooth in his ear. He's got the crazy hair. Um, he's actually, um eating a salad why he interviews me as well right um i'm cool with it i'm rolling with it um not how i would conduct an interview um he called me in to, it's not like i it's not, it's not like i showed up dropped my resume off he called me in to be interviewed after i applied and um yeah anyhow so he's eating lunch right there uh while we're doing it and um he wants he wants to hire me. Great, he's building me up. Spending 10, 15 minutes like, hey, this is what we're gonna, this is what you're gonna be working with. Um, it's not necessarily stuff I want to work with. There's more web design and SEO, basic stuff, and stuff I was qualified to work with. And um, he spent a good portion of it telling me what was wrong with me, like breaking me down. And uh, I didn't like that at all. Um, when I, when I told him I didn't use Dreamweaver, he said, oh, well, you know, all real developers, all wi real developers use Dreamweaver. What, you, you just open up a tech center and start building it? No, no one does that. That's what he, that's what he told me, right? Um, and uh, I remember thinking, like, this is a little strange, but all right. Uh, I'm, I'm rolling with it. I'm, de I'm pretty desperate, man. Um, and so he's breaking me down, just kind of telling me everything that's wrong with me and and how he's going to make it better and like how I'm going to grow and mature as a developer. And then he, um, he hits me with, uh, mind you, I'm, I'm charging around $20 an hour, um, as a freelancer. And this is in, uh, Los Angeles, California, by the way, to give you a context for what that is. Minimum wage, I think at this time was $9 an hour. So he wants to pay me $12 an hour. And I told myself that the lowest at that time I could go and devote my time to was uh, 15. Realistically, I wanted to get paid while I was making freelancing, which was a very reasonable rate of 20 an hour. Um, and so I, I, I was honest with you. I said, look, man, the, the lowest I would ever go is $15 an hour. And um, he basically I did the same thing he just said, told me everything that was wrong with me as an applicant. Um and uh promised how he's gonna make me into a better person or better developer all this sort of stuff and i i had my if if i really believed that i might have been more willing to work with him but uh after he told me about the dreamweaver thing everything was suspect after that and i'm like look I, i'm just here to get some resume experience and a little something a little paycheck so that i can buy food and rent right that was where we were at in life and um i um i i just was honest with us. I said, look, man, this it's too, that is too low. It is too low. I can get a job. Uh, you know, I want to work. I like what you guys are doing here. I want to learn, I'm trying to get better. 
Um, but in terms of hourly compensation, it's nowhere near what I think I'm worth. And the lowest I could go is 15. And we're having the, we're doing the, the give and take, right? Uh, and mind you, most of the time you never have this issue. They'll send you a decent offer or you'll be upfront about it. And like, but this is a much smaller company. You know, it's got six, eight employees and they're doing Dreamweaver, right? <laughs> and so that's where, that's the situation we're in. And so I walked away. Um, he basically, I, I, I said, you know, I'm not going to accept that. I, I apologize. Thank you for your time. I was very nice about it. We just were on two different pages. He he um, he said some smart ass thing that even if I was super desperate, just because he said it, I was I wouldn't go back. He said uh, he shook my hand, and I I'm I'm ending it nice. I said you know I put, stick my hand out. I, I say you know what? Thank you for taking the time. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm sorry that it's, it's not going to work out. Best of luck. Something like that. Something normal. And, and he shook my hand and he said something along the lines of, um, um, you know, uh, good luck to you. And if you come to your senses, give me a call back. That was it. If you come to your senses, give me a call back. And even if I came to my senses, I'd cut off my goddamn hand before I ever go work for someone like that. Um... That's the type of person who tears you down. As he was through the whole interview process. And one of the worst things you could do for yourself. No matter how desperate I was. So, fast forward. And I'm not just... I'm trying to... I'm trying to so, fast forward to actually a, about a month later. Um, I get a job uh, at a software company. A real company. <laughs> if you will. Um, that has about 40, 50 developers. In my previous job. Not the one I'm working now. And I... I actually exceeded, remember I said I was, in a perfect world, I wanted to get paid at least what I was getting paid as a freelancer. I uh, ex exceeded that. I got 22 an hour there. Um, and I was, which still, by the way, at, at this point, April and I had broken up, and so I'm on one income. And it was rough, man. We're, I'm barely getting by, barely paying my rent. You know, I'm... At that time, I'm saving 10% as well and struggling. So um, I always suggest saving money if if you can skate by. I, I barely skated by. Barely paying rent, you know, barely uh, paying the bills, staying afloat. I made the decision to uh, stop going to school. So, but that that's for another video. So I, I, did, I did what at the time I thought was very good for myself. I got some relevant, semi-relevant experience and the potential to be promoted down the road. That was what I was looking for, and I was very happy about it, and I, I really appreciated the opportunity. And during the interview process, um, uh, everyone was friendly. Everyone was, you know, there's a difference between testing you and just telling you your shit, right? And uh, there's, there, it's all it's all about delivery, right? Constructive criticism, not just criticism. And it really, it was a good interview. I got hired 20 minutes later over the phone. Everything was great. They made me a fair offer. They paid me. They asked what I wanted to get paid. I said somewhere between 20 and 25. These are my skills. They offered me 22. I couldn't. How can you say no? They gave you exactly what you asked for. Um, so fast forward to the drive down here from California to Florida. I get a call. And mind you, I'm just driving, right? I'm just driving. I get a call from a number I don't recognize. No big deal. I had been filling out a bunch of job apps. Someone called me back about one. Um, I actually got three job offers as I'm driving down. They're like, are you sure not interested? I'm like, I'm pretty committed right now, man. I'm driving down cross country. My little mirage is all packed up. I'm driving. I'm trucking over. I, I, I It's too late for any other offers, right? So I, I, I got some. Uh, but one of those calls, one of those three calls was from the little web design shop in Long Beach, California. Um, it's the same guy. It is the, it is the owner. And, um, he, uh, I recognize his voice. He's a very unique character. You would meet this guy one time and you'd remember him the rest of your life. I, I kid you not. Uh, so I instantly recognize his voice. And, um, once, and once we're up, caught up to speed, I was like, this voice sounds familiar. He tells me, and I was like, oh, shit. They're like, oh, we still have your resume on file. 
and we're looking to hire some some designers, some developers. And um, he's like, if I remember la correctly, last time um, we uh, we were uh, talking about uh, price or about hourly rate or something like that, and we couldn't come to terms. He's much much nicer this time, by the way, because it sounded like a bunch of people probably quit because he's a douchebag. But yeah, so <laughs> um, so. I'm having this cordial conversation as he's leading, and I'm I'm uh, I'm 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 feeling good, man. I I I I'm enjoying that he's calling me. Let me put it that way. And I got nothing but 36 hours of driving, so I got nothing but to do but talk with the dude. So we're talking, and he's like, you know, I I'd be willing to go up to $18 an hour, um, and uh, you know, we're gonna and he, and he starts giving me the whole spiel again. He's like, he's like, you know, have you got any uh additional experience and i start telling him like you know i i um i was just working at a uh you know i don't tell him i'm on the way to my new job i i tell him you know i just got um you know nine months experience at this software company and i was doing documentation i was um doing wireframing user flow charts um gathering requirements um you know project management sort of stuff uh technical documentation i start going over all the uh, more technical things i did at my job uh, and, um, he's like, you know, I, I'd be willing, it sounds like you've improved your skill set. Um, I'd be willing to go all the way up to $18 an hour. And, um, and so I, 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 I said, I, you know, I cordially declined. I said, you know, that that's not going to be high enough. And, um, I appreciate, I appreciate you taking the time to call me, but it, it, it's, it's not going to work out. Um, he's like, well, what would you like? And um, I said my hourly rate of, at, at that time, when I started my job, um, it was about, uh, compared to $18 an hour, uh, I think it comes to about 30 an hour. So significantly higher. And I said, you know, I would need, I would need, uh, and I, mind you, I had, no, I had no intention of doing this. I just, I just remember having the conversation with him and I'm killing time in this car ride. And I, I remember saying, you know, I, I would, um, the lowest, the lowest I could go is, uh, 30, uh, $30 an hour. And, and to him, apparently I just dropped an F bomb and he said, good luck with that. No one's going to pay you. Same, same sort of MO and hung up on me. This is, this is a hundred percent true story. Good luck with that. No one's going to pay you that hung up on me. Um, so to wrap this whole long winded story that spanned like a year and a half to two years up uh, is, um, know your worth, right? Know, know what your market value is. And when you meet toxic people like that, and understand, I, I, I'm just as desperate as the rest of you at that time, uh, if not more so. Um, don't bring toxic people into your life, your workplace, or anything else. And if you're worth $20 an hour, what you should be doing is trying to go up to 25 And you're worth 25 try, try to go up to 30 And that's going to give you options in life. It's going to make sure that your lights are on, your internet is here, if you, you know your your house you've rent the food you know uh and eventually if you're doing well you upgrade to high speed internet whatever it is right uh, it gives it gives you um some of the more comforts of life but also having respect for yourself and understanding that this is not a person that i would choose to have in my life all my bosses i've had since meeting that that gentleman all the bosses i've had in my life have always been very respectful it doesn't mean you have to agree with them on everything that doesn't mean that you have to be a suck up or anything like that. It just means that as an employee, they respect you and they treat you reasonably. That that's it. I'm not a I'm not an unreasonable guy. I'm pretty practical, but I I just remember I'll, I'll I'll never forget it. I'll never forget the interview and I'll never forget the phone call. I will not remember his name or the name of the company. All I could say is a small web design thing in Long Beach. 
Uh, but know your worth, guys. Uh, when you're when you're going out and you're trying to get a junior level role, know what the market value is. Know where you can get started. And if you're just below market value, no problem. But if you're 50% below market value, if you're 70% below market value, if they're offering you $12 an hour and you were previously making 20 or 30, you know, um, know what your experience brings you and know what your skill set brings you. But more than that, more than the money. Uh, I think really just know that be the better person. Like, I probably shouldn't have had that phone call. I took it. We had a conversation. And I could have I could have gone down the route of saying, you know, I, I'm stopping. I'm actually accepting a job right now. I'm not, I'm not interested. Um, and I could have stopped that. But I kind of played it out a little bit. I'll be honest with you. But I was also on a... You know, 36 hour car ride, so uh, in my defense. But don't turn into that guy. And don't surround yourself with people like that. When someone tells you you can't do it, just say, hey, thanks for the motivation. When someone tells you you're not worth that, you say, you may not be, but I am. So I hope that you guys stay focused. I hope that you stay motivated. And in this case, it was an external person that was trying to tear me down. Someone who didn't know me or what I'm capable of. But oftentimes what will happen is that the people closest to you may not understand what you're trying to do. They may not understand you as an individual. And and they may, they may tear you down inadvertently because they don't want you to take any risks. They don't want you to take any gambles. Um... And they may not get it. They may not understand it. And it, that's the, that's when it's super rough. Like this guy, two two days in my life I ever had to deal with him. When it's, you know, parents, sisters, brothers, friends that say, hey, don't do this. I was watching a video where Elon Musk, before he was starting SpaceX, one of his very close friends sat him down and made him watch a 30-minute compilation of rockets blowing up so that Elon Musk wouldn't lose his fortunes. It happens to everybody. It happens to me. It happens to Elon Musk. It doesn't matter how smart, how rich, how powerful you are. It happens to everybody. And the people that are closest to you are going to try and do that. Um, and it's not like it's just they're... Sometimes it is because they're, they're nasty people. And maybe someone did that to them. And broke them down. And they just accepted it as a way of life. It's not. Unless you let it be. And so I hope you guys, when you're out there and you're working hard understand that your worth in monetary is tied to your skill set but as a person it's really up to you to define who you surround yourself with and who you listen to don't let anyone tell you you're not worth what you think you are don't let anybody uh beat you down and and tell you that you're fucking crazy and when some and when they do don't get upset don't get angry get motivated so I hope you guys get motivated. That's a little bit of story time about someone in my life for two days, anyhow, that tried to tell me that I ain't shit. <laughs> so a little, little bit of it. As always, guys, don't forget to join our Facebook group, Code Tech and Caffeine. Link is in the description. And if you want to support me, you can at patreon.com slash coding tutorial 360. I will see you guys in the next video. Stay motivated. Work hard, guys. I am, and I hope you are too. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you're interested in coding bootcamp, check out devmountain.com where housing is included in your price of tuition. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share and support me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.